This is the 13th in a series of lectures giving an introduction to exterior differential systems. In this lecture, we'll uh, carry out part of the proof of the cartan kaler theorem, in particular focusing on the notion of restraining manifold. Um, so we want to try to, um, to describe somewhat geometrically the strategy Carton has for constructing integral manifolds. Imagine we have a manifold with an exterior differential system on it, and we pick a hypersurface in that manifold. And then we pick a hypersurface in that hypersurface, so co-dimension 2 submanifold, and so on and so forth, lower and lower dimension, all the way down to some co-dimension P submanifold. We'll call that uh, a, a flag of submanifolds. It's a collection of nested submanifolds, starting with co-dimension P, going up to co-dimension P minus 1, and so on and so forth, all the way up to producing a hypersurface inside the ambient manifold. Now, um, if we're given uh, a, a p-dimensional integral manifold, and suppose it's a generic in, in the sense that it's going to intersect every submanifold in the flag transversely, and we get, of course, we get to pick the flag, so we can make it once you've got, if you pick the integral manifold, you could always pick the flag uh, generically so that you could get that to happen. So it's going to intersect every one of these things generically. It'll therefore intersect the hypersurface, the, 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 the largest element, the flag, in a p minus one dimensional integral manifold because every sub-manifold of an integral manifold is an integral manifold. Uh, the intersection is therefore an integral manifold, dimension p minus 1, and so on and so forth. It intersects the hyperservice in the hyperservice in a p minus 2 dimensional integral manifold, and so on and so forth. So we get lower and lower dimensional integral manifolds all the way down to zero dimensional integral manifold in the smallest sub-manifold in the flag. So, um, so this produces a sequence of lower and lower dimensional integral manifolds. And the generic p-dimensional integral manifold will, will intersect in this way. We'll have this transversality condition. So that's a, a picture we have of somehow once you pick a flag, you expect that typically integral manifolds will intersect it in this way, giving a sequence of smaller and smaller dimensional integral manifolds going down to dimension zero. Now, so let's suppose we try and go backwards. We don't have an integral manifold dimension p. We just have the flag. So we have a flag of submanifolds inside uh, inside a manifold M. Um, and again, when I say a flag, I really mean that there's just a there's a hyperservice in M, and inside there's a uh, inside that hyperservice there's a smaller dimensional a co-dimension two and co-dimension three and so on. So a collection of smaller and smaller dimensional submanifolds all going all the way down to co-dimension P in in the ambient manifold M. So uh, so we've got this flag of submanifolds, and we try to go backwards. Instead of starting with an integral manifold of dimension p, let's start with a point on the smallest submanifold of our flag. Now, once we've got that point, we'll try to construct an integral curve through it. And the integral curve should lie on the next smallest submanifold, the flag, and so on and so forth. So that's reversing exactly the picture we had a moment ago. In the last slide, we were looking at uh, starting with a p-dimensional integral manifold and looking at its various intersections and assuming that it's transverse to every element in our flag of submanifolds, those intersections go down, down, down a dimension. Now we've started go going backwards. We've tried to take a point and uh, on our smallest submanifold, build an integral curve through to the next smallest integral service through that curve on the next smallest and so on and so forth. So that's the picture Carton's going to have for us. We'll start with the flag and we'll use it as a means to try and construct successive uh, integral manifolds lying on the various elements of the flag. Okay, and we go all the way up and eventually we get to, uh, to a, to a p-dimensional integral manifold. The problem with this strategy as a means of constructing p-dimensional integral manifolds, uh, well, there are two problems. One is that maybe there aren't any integral curves, maybe there aren't any integral services and so on in the flag manifolds. That's one issue. But the other one is maybe there's too many. When you draw the integral curve, maybe there are many integral curves through the given point on the given flag submanifold. So we imagine we've started at the co-dimension P submanifold, the smallest submanifold in the flag, by picking a point. And then the next submanifold of the flag, the next larger, the largest dimension one, uh, we're trying to construct an integral curve, but there might be many of them. So how do we deal with that? What we'll do is to restrain. Inside that submanifold of the flag, we pick a so-called restraining manifold, which is just enough uh, dimensions of restraint that it will ensure that there's exactly one integral curve through that point lying on that restraining manifold. 
So we've constructed a flag, and then inside the flag manifolds, inside the submanifolds of the flag, we're going to pick restraining manifolds, each of which will ensure that the next stage in construction, the previous integral manifold, lies in exactly one integral manifold inside the restraining manifold at the, of the next dimension. So it should be, each restraining manifold has to be just exactly enough equations to cut down the freedom in constructing the next integral manifold. It's not obvious how do we do that, how do we pick the restraining manifold, but that's going to be part of the strategy. We'll, have, uh, so we'll start with a flag, and then we'll try and construct restraining manifolds inside the flag, and then we'll end up with uh, hopefully having exactly one integral manifold of each dimension all the way up to dimension P inside the various restraining manifolds. So we want to make sure that there'll be a unique integral curve through our chosen point that lies on the restraining manifold. The restraining manifold is just enough uh, equations to cut down the freedom in choosing integral curves so that they become they becomes a unique integral curve through that point. And it's not obvious that you can do this, um, and it's not obvious how you do it, but that's part of the strategy. We'll try and construct these restraining manifolds so that they'll cut down the, the flexibility in, in building integral manifolds at each step down to ma making sure that there's a unique integral manifold that arises consistent with what was, what, was, what was constructed in the previous step and that lies in our restraining manifold. So we have to pick the restraining manifolds nested to make this work. We're going to have to have each restraining manifold contain the next so that the integral manifold we construct inside it will lie inside the next restraining manifold so we can construct the next integral manifold. So we're going to have a sequence of restraining manifolds that will be each ne nested in the next. So we started off with a flag of submanifolds, in other words, a nested collection of submanifolds, uh, but uh, of successive dimensions, go to dimension p, go to dimension p minus 1, and so on, going up, up, up in dimension. And now inside each of them, we've constructed somehow some restraining manifold, each of which lies in the next, a kind of partial flag of of uh, submanifolds. The restraining manifolds might not go up strictly in dimension uh, dimension at a time. They may have some some jumps. There may be a restraining manifold of dimension 3, and then the next one may be dimension 7, and the next one dimension 19. So they don't necessarily form what we've called a flag. They might be thought of as something like a like a partial flag. Um, so, But they are, they are nested in one another, inside one another. Let's start from the smallest and work our way up, and we'll try to build our integral manifolds. And each uh, has to, of course, restraining manifold has to lie inside the next flag manifold and uh, contain the previous restraining manifold. So it's got to be uh, in, inside the next flag manifold, and inside it has to be the previous restraining manifold. And we construct the restraining manifolds up, 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 starting by picking a restraining manifold in the smallest flag manifold, then uh, a restraining manifold containing it in the next flag manifold, and so on and so forth. So that's how we'll build up this family of restraining manifolds, forming a kind of partial flag of restraining manifolds inside the flag of uh, submanifolds. And we will see that in order to make this process work, in order to pick the restraining manifolds so that the, so that we get uh, the required um, the required uh, uniqueness uh, condition on the integral manifold at each step. Um, we'll have to make it depend locally on si functions of i variables, and that's where the characters show up. And that's what we expect in the cartan kaler theorem. There should be si functions of i variables. We'll find the restraining manifold is exactly the imposition of that many functions of that many variables, because each, uh, each flag manifold is, is, is of a certain dimension. We can think of it as having a certain number of variables in it, and we'll constrain them by picking a, 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 fl a flag, uh, by picking a straining manifold. The restraining manifold will be SI functions of I variables. We'll see how this works in a second. But that's the idea that geometrically, we start off with a flag of submanifolds, we pick a sort of partial flag of restraining manifolds inside them, and, and we made sure that at each step, this will ensure that, the, 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 that each integral manifold is contained in, in exactly one integral manifold of the next dimension sitting inside the restraining manifolds. Okay, so that's geometrically what we're doing. And also, we want to make sure that if we pick different restraining manifolds, we should end up with different integral manifolds at the end. So that's also important, because that'll mean that the different integral manifolds we arrive at, these various p-dimensional integral manifolds that we construct, actually depend on SI functions of I variables worth of initial data. So again, we've constructed integral manifolds by a process successively starting with a point, going to a curve, a surface, and so on. Um, and we've done that by starting with a flag and then picking inside a partial flag of restraining manifolds and then applying somehow some kind of Cauchy-Kovlevskaya type theorem to construct uh, 
a unique integral manifold of each dimension all the way up. And we can see that if we picked an integral manifold uh, xp of dimension p and cut it in by a flag of generically chosen uh, submanifolds, then uh, it should give us these integral manifolds of these various dimensions going back. Okay, so that's the strategy. Uh, the big picture of what we're trying to do. But let's see if we can re recover the PDE picture, go back to what we wrote in coordinates when we talked about Tableau. We wrote out PDEs in coordinates, and we saw that they somehow would impose um, some kind of, of conditions on integral manifolds that they'd have to satisfy certain PDEs in coordinates. Let's take another look at those PDEs. We see already in our coordinates, which were x1 to xp and U, various u variables, um, we could see that we could think of the flag as being just exactly imposing the vanishing of various of those x variables. In other words, we restrict the number of independent variables we work with. Each mi is parameterized by variables x1 to xi. And that's a flag. Um, so when we had those PDEs, we could think of that as being the flag that we had. And we did construct our integral manifolds by starting with a point, and then along the x1 axis, we constructed an integral curve along the x2 direction. Uh, to moving outward in the x2 variable, we constructed an integral surface, and so on and so forth. So that was exactly the flag we were using. And the restraining manifolds could be thought of as the initial data that we used at each, st each step to construct the next um, integral, uh, the next integral manifold, and the next dimension. What we did was to uh, to impose initial data s i functions of i variables by s insisting that this restraining manifold r i uh, uh, it consists of allowing all the variables to be free except for the ones bigger than x i. Um, all the x one to x i variables are are allowed to be free, and the subsequent ones are set to zero but also imposing this initial data condition that these u's are uh, set to be certain initial values and that we then propagate them forward from there using our PDEs. So we can see in coordinates that the, this geometric notion of having a flag and this geometric notion of having a sort of restraining, a collection of restraining manifolds that, that sit inside those flag manifolds is exactly what we were already doing. It's just a geometric description of the same story Moreover, if we had a, a flag, we could at least generically, we could write it, because we had such flexibility in choosing the coordinates, we could actually write it this way. And then the restraining data, uh, the restraining manifold could be written as initial data. So this is the, the right picture uh, geometrically, um, and it, it gives a more global description to what we were doing locally in local coordinates with our PDEs. Okay, so let's see if we can figure out whether or not this restraining condition will actually work to give rise to existence and uniqueness of integral manifolds at each step. So let's split the cartan kähler theorem into two pieces. We'll have one piece, which will just worry about trying to build up integral manifolds uh, one step at a time, just one dimension at a time from some sort of non-characteristic initial data. And then we'll worry about restraining manifolds. So in this, this situation right here, I don't want to worry about the restraining manifold part of the story. Um, so let's uh, write down a cartan kähler theorem, which doesn't worry about, about the inductive construction for restraining manifolds. It just worries about building an from an integral manifold a next dimensional integral manifold. Suppose we have an exterior differential system and a non-characteristic initial mani an, an integral manifold x. Um, that'll be our initial data. Suppose x has locally maximal rank polar equations in every tangent space. Okay, so this is getting close to the Cartan, to the Kochikov-Levsky theorem that we had previously, where we had this condition on polar equations. Then x is a hyperservice in an integral manifold. Okay, so that's a uh, a, a, a cartan kähler theorem that only worries about trying to stretch up into one higher dimension, and that. Hyperservice is locally unique. And it really has to do with the fact that it's a non-characteristic initial ma integral manifold x. That makes sure that that non-characteristic initial data can be used to, to plug into the Kochikov-Levsky theorem. But this doesn't have any condition on squaredness of the symbol matrix. So it's a little bit different than what we did last time. So this theorem we won't prove this time. We'll prove this theorem next time. This time we're going to prove uh, a, a much simpler uh, second step 
This first step only enables us, this cartan kähler theorem 1, only enables us to extend an integral manifold to a next dimensional integral manifold. What we want to do then is to think about how we would restrain to make sure the restraining manifold uh, situation is going to work, that we're going to be able to use a certain restraining manifold. So let's say that a stress a manifold restrains an integral manifold um, if uh, the exterior differential system pulls back to the restraining manifold so that x becomes a non-characteristic integral manifold inside the, the, the pullback system inside the restraining manifold. So uh, and then and has still happens, happens to have lack, locally maximal locally maximal rank polar equations. So um, again, what we what we want to do is to make sure that when we uh, when we construct this restraining manifold, um, it contains this integral manifold x, and it, we can apply the previous theorem to it. So it's exactly the condition that we can apply the previous theorem, this, uh, the cartan kähler theorem that we just wrote down, cartan kähler theorem part one. Uh, we can apply to the restraining manifold. Now we want to have some kind of condition for this restraining. This we, here we've just written down the condition that that theorem should apply. But it'd be nice to have a theorem, a, a condition that's a bit more infinitesimal and a bit easier to check. And so, uh, so we'll have a another cartan kähler theorem that'll be very elementary and which will give us a condition we can check using only linear algebra. So uh, we want a condition for restraining. We want to know when does our restraining manifold actually restrain. Uh, in that sense. So uh, given an integral manifold x of an exterior differential system with again locally maximal rank polar equations and remember that's something we're going to be able to check using Carton's test. We'll be able to check that using characters using Carton's test. So we're not afraid of locally maximal rank polar equations as a condition. It's a reasonable condition to work with because we know how to test for it using Carton's test using the characters. Um, suppose we had a submanifold that contains x and suppose that all the non-zero polar equations of that integral element t x x, remember polar equations are not functions on tangent spaces of x, they're function, linear functions on tangent spaces of m. Right? These are linear functions on the tangent spaces of m, these polar equations. Suppose you pull them back to tangent spaces of, of the restraining manifold, and suppose they all pull back to be non-zero. So that's a condition you can check because that's linear algebra. Um, so you can check that and then we also need to check that the vectors in the tangent spaces of the restraining guy, R, where all those polar equations vanish, should form a subspace that contains that tangent plane as a hyperplane. So that's the one higher dimensional integral element. Uh, the polar equations have to vanish because we want it to be an integral element. We want it to be unique, the unique integral element because that'll make sure things are non-characteristic, right? To be characteristic means to live in two different integral elements. So we're going to require there's a unique integral element. And that integral element has to be exactly where those polar equations vanish. And then that will make sure it's unique. And that'll make sure that, therefore, that x is non-characteristic. Okay, so given all that, then x, then r restrains x. In other words, we can apply our previous uh, cartan kähler theorem 1 that we wrote down a little bit a few uh, slides ago. Um, so put it together again what we're imagining is we start with an integral manifold x and we assume that it has locally maximal rank polar equations. Again we're not afraid of that condition because we know we have a Carton test to look at for that sort of behavior. Um, then we can test on this submanifold R whether or not it satisfies these conditions because these conditions really only depend on linear algebra on the tangent spaces of R. You have to look at each tangent space of R where it happens to uh, be at a point at a point little x that lies in capital X. So you calculate out these conditions: uh, are the polar equations pulling back non-trivially, and um, are the vectors on which the polar equations all vanish forming a subspace containing that tangent space as a hyperplane? So this is linear algebra on the tangent spaces of R, and if that linear algebra conditions or those conditions are satisfied, cartan kähler one applies. Now this isn't a very serious theorem because in fact the proof is trivial. Um, all we want to do is just to check that R is a restraining manifold in the sense we just said, but you can see immediately that the condition on the polar equations, the, the two conditions on polar equations ensure that, that X is a non-characteristic uh, hyper, hyper surface inside some, some integral manifold using the Cartan-Kähler-1 Cartan 1 
So it's exactly the conditions under which Carter and Kaler one applies, because what we've done is to make sure that there is um, uh, that that the tangent spaces of this capital X are non-characteristic hyperplanes. Okay, so that makes sure that we can then successively construct integral uh, to construct constraining manifolds uh, that contain our integral manifolds um, step by step. So it's easy to prove now that should x have locally maximal rank polar equations, there is a restraining manifold, because all you've got to do is to try and arrange these conditions, these linear algebra conditions, to occur in one tangent space, and then they'll occur nearby automatically. So that gives us a restraining manifold, and that makes sure that, that restraining manifolds are available when we need them. And then the first theorem will ensure that we can, we can stretch up our integral manifold to a, the next dimension. And so we're not finished proving the cardin kaler theorem because cardin kaler 1, the, 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 the statement we gave earlier in this lecture, um, we haven't proven. We've left that uh, for, for next time to try and figure out why cardin kaler 1 applies. It's going to obviously be related to the koshikov levsky theorem. But we've proven cartan kaler 2 uh, given cartan kaler 1. Uh, so we still need to prove this cartan kaler 1, but we have seen that cartan kaler 1 implies cartan kaler 2 um, as, tri as a triviality. It's just, uh, it, it's just a restatement of the linear algebra that you need to check in order to uh, apply cartan kaler 1 to a restraining manifold. So we now know how we have a good linear algebra condition for restraining manifolds that can make it possible to construct them and uh, to check that they exist uh, using only linear algebra. And we then only have to prove cartan kaler 1, and we'll get all the way to the cartan kaler theorem that we stated in the first lecture. The first lecture, we stated a cartan kaler theorem that was just about the construction of an integral manifold through an integral element. And it's a trivial consequence of cartan kaler 2, because you construct the various required restraining manifolds step by step. In fact, Carton Kater 1 is really the, 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 the chief issue because it's going to deal with the compatibility problem we saw. So previously we looked at the Carton Kater, we tried to uh, take a tableau and write it out in coordinates and see um, what systems of PDEs we got. And then we showed that every integral manifold would have to satisfy those PDEs. We claimed that for an involutive system, the, the solutions of those PDEs would always be integral manifolds. But there was a compatibility problem we didn't solve. And we can see that compatibility problem is really going to occur step by step at each stage when we in introduce our restraining manifolds. We're going to have to show that we can get Carton Kaler 1 to apply. Once we can apply Carton Kaler 1, step by step, we can inductively construct our integral manifolds. And so the induction process will succeed because we have Cartan Kaler 2 to construct restraining manifolds, and we can keep going and going all the way up. So the Cartan Kaler that we've stated in the very first lecture is an easy consequence of Cartan Kaler 2 in this lecture. The hard part is, and, and Cartan Kaler 2 is an easy conse consequence of Cartan Kaler 1. The hard part is, why is Cartan Kaler 1 true? And that's what we'll prove next time.